Well, Merry Christmas, Christ Church family. I want to thank you for taking a moment as you celebrate with your family and friends to focus your heart with me around God's word. You know, it's so easy to get the Christmas story wrong. It's, it's so easy to make the Christmas story about us. Now, I'm not a Christmas curmudgeon by any means. I love the holiday fun and tra the traditions that Christmas bring. I love the lights and the gifts and the sights and the sounds and the family and friends and feasting and all that goes along with Christmas. But sometimes those things can overtake the true reality of Christmas. And true Christmas really is about God's response to broken, rebellious, image bearers, that God sent his son on a glorious mission of grace to live and to die and to rise again in our place. I'm familiar with all the Christmas passages and they are near and dear to my heart. There is one Christmas passage that I absolutely love more than any other, and that is found in Paul's letter to the church of Galatia. In Galatians chapter four, verses four through seven, it says this, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. Now there are incredible realities that we need to remember about Christmas right here in this passage. And I want to share with you four quick reminders that we would do well to reflect on and to remember this Christmas of 2021. The first Christmas reminder is that God's timing is perfect. Like Christmas is the reality that God always accomplishes his purpose for my life at exactly the right moment. And that's why Paul says in the fullness of time. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we were all the way back in Genesis 315, that prophecy that one would come who would crush the serpent's head. And thousands of years later, at the right moment, at the perfect moment, at God's moment, Jesus Christ came. Now, from a historical perspective, if I were God and if you were God, we would have had more preferable moments, but this was God's moment, the first century AD. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, born into obscurity, uh, born underneath Roman occupation, born into a no-name uh, family. You think about his fair parents. I mean, you talk, you talk to his parents about perfect moments. I think both of them would have thought from time to time, maybe God's timing was a little off. Uh, Mary was a teenager. She was unwed. She was pregnant. And when it was time to give birth to the baby, they traveled south 70 miles uh, up to Jerusalem. And finally, she gave birth in a cave where animals sleep. And I'm sure that they thought from time to time, maybe, maybe God's timing could have been a little bit better. And I'm sure we all feel like that at times. God's sense of good timing virtually usually is never our sense of good timing. But God's timing is perfect. In the fullness of time, Paul says, Jesus came. Therefore, we can trust, we can trust in his timing. Now listen, you can't, you can't ever draw a line from God's heart to the clock to your situation or problem. Most of the time, there isn't any uh, relative connection between those three. But I can assure you in your moment today that God promises that his timing is perfect. But here's a second Christmas reminder. Not only is God's timing perfect, but his provision is certain. It says that God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, meaning God came down and he became like us. God came down because you and I could never meet the law's requirement. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how perfect you are. It doesn't matter what kind of connections you have. The Bible says, and this is a drum the Bible beats, that the gap is too wide. God's standard is too perfect for you and I to meet it. 
God is saying to us through the law that there is no way of bridging uh, this gap with your religion. There is no way of bridging this gap with your morality. There's even no way of bridging this gap with your devotion. God is not only saying that, He's saying, I can't even bridge the gap by just saying, let bygones be bygones. He is saying that there is a debt and some payment of that debt has to be made. There has to be a shedding of blood. And the wonder of Christmas is the reality that God closed the gap. The wonder of Christmas is the reality that God nullified the chasm by sending forth His Son as the perfect propitiation, as the perfect sacrifice, as the perfect substitute, as the perfect standard-keeping Savior. And if that's true, we can rest in it. We can rest in His provision. Listen, it's only when you have no more options it's only when you have no more resources you are actually in a position to receive a miracle from God. And the reality of Christmas is a reminder that God always accomplishes His purposes in my life at exactly the right time with exactly the right provision. The provision of His Son, Jesus Christ. Our third Christmas reminder is that His grace is life changing. So his timing is perfect. His provision is certain, but his grace is life changing. It's transforming. It says, so we might receive adoption as sons. I mean, that is so incredible. Verse seven says that we were slaves, but we're no longer slaves. We are sons. Man, that is a big status move, isn't it? That's a huge status move. God has dealt with your sins in order to bring you into a family. By grace, through faith, you can relate to God as a father. That's an incredible relationship. Not only do I relate to God as a judge, the righteous judge, but I relate to Him as my father. That means that I have an enduring, unconditional, unmerited relationship. And if that's true, walk in it. Walk in it this Christmas. Be reminded to walk in your new identity. Maybe, maybe the only reason that you're still wrapped up and absorbed in, in fear, maybe the only reason that you're still wrapped up and absorbed in anger and discouragement, maybe, maybe the reason you can't break these habits in your life is just you're not embracing your new status. You're not embracing your new identity. Listen, because Jesus Christ came you are a son of God. Because He came, you are a daughter of the Most High God. And maybe that's the reminder for you this morning, that you are walking with a new identity. And so if I have this new identity, if I have this new status, no longer slave, but a son, maybe I ought to walk in it. His timing is perfect. His provision is certain. His grace is life-changing. And the Christmas reminder The fourth final Christmas reminder is His love is everlasting. His love is everlasting. It says it right here. God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. So He's saying, because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. What a reminder to us that that God put the Holy Spirit in you to confirm his love for you, to confirm uh, his strength and power and resource and direction in your life. And in your response, my response must be to rejoice in it, to rejoice in it like a child. This is what he's saying. He's saying, he's saying that God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. That just means daddy, daddy. That means Papa, Daddy, this is, this is the heart of a child. Now, if you think about a two-year-old, there's no such thing as a stressed-out two-year-old. I mean, just watch him. I mean, he's got Kool-Aid all over his mouth. Uh, his whole goal is to take his pants off and run for his life. That's his goal. He's got a cookie behind his ear. He's got his hair matted because he slept on it. I mean, like, life is one big happy adventure for a two-year-old, for the heart of a child. in. The heart of a child is the heart of a son or a daughter who relates to God as their father. 
And that's the spirit of sonship. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is access. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is acceptance. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is joy overflowing. In Christmas, and the reality of Christmas is a reminder to stop acting like a slave and to start living like a son. Rejoicing in his perfect timing, rejoicing in your new identity, celebrating his unfailing provision and love for you. So some questions that you could talk about maybe around the table today as you're celebrating this incredible holiday, this incredible reminder that Jesus came. Are you trusting him? Are you trusting him in your moment? What moment are you going through right now where you are waiting on a promise of God? Are you trusting his perfect timing? What, what are you thankful most about his provision for your life right now? Are you living in your new identity as a son or a daughter? Is your joy meter full? What is increasing your joy? Maybe what's hindering your joy? These are all things to think about as we look and as we focus our hearts in the scripture in Galatians chapter 4, 4 through 7. Thank you for allowing me to invade your Christmas celebration. We sure look forward to being together again next Sunday. And as always, in Christmas ought to be a cheerful reminder of this. We say it every week. You are loved.